Hey guys, Greg here. Let's solve zigzag conversion, lead code number six. Okay, so the string PayPal is hiring is written in a zigzag pattern on a given number of rows like this. So it's written like this. We have P-A-H-N-A-P-L-S-I-I-G-Y-I-R. The reason it's written like that is because it's bottom to top in a zigzag pattern. So it's PayPal is hiring. Okay, so this string right here is the zigzag conversion of this string. And so to define a zigzag zigzag conversion, you need to be given a number of rows as well. So particularly, this is the zigzag conversion of PayPal is hiring with specifically three rows as given. So it says that right here, given this string here, and particularly num rows is equal to three, then the line by line version of the conversion is this string. And that's going to be the desired output. Okay, so you could have that same string, but if you were to do it with four rows, well, then it's going to be PayPal is hiring like that. So you can see we go down and then we go diagonal up and then we go down and we go diagonal up and down. And this case looks like a silly one, but it's actually very important. If you are given any string with the number of rows equal to one, then the conversion is going to be the exact same string that you were given. Any sort of string in a row, that's just going to be one line. And it's important as consists only of English letters. So we'll only have lowercase and uppercase letters as well as comma and period. Okay, so we know the zigzag conversion would be written like this, P-A-Y and then P A L is H I R I N and G. So you'd create this and then you have to join it up line by line like this and you would end up with the string. So that would be your full conversion there. Okay, so what we're going to do is create a matrix. We'll just call it M and this is going to have three rows. So it's going to be a list where each of these are for now going to be empty lists like this. So we're just creating space because we're going to put characters into these lists and we'll keep track of two different things. So we'll use an index I. This is going to be initialized at zero saying we're starting at the first row and we'll also keep track of a direction which I'll call D. We set that equal to one for now saying we are going down. So one is basically an increment like if you add one to something it's going to take you one down an index and it's going to switch between one and negative one. So when we hit down here we're going to switch our direction to be negative one saying we would go back up. Okay but it starts at one and I is going to initialize to zero and we're going to iterate through our string. So we'll see a character C right here. We see a P. Okay we are going to append to this list right here. Now when we do that, we're going to shift our index in our direction. And so it's positive one, it means we're going down. So we shift it one down and we go over. Okay, we're using an A. We're going to move over I, we're going to move over C, and we're going to put a Y right here. Okay, at this point, it's where we want to flip our direction. We want to flip our direction to be negative one, and then we can shift our I in that direction. It's actually gonna move you up one. So we're gonna go back over here. So we're gonna add a character here. So this next one is is going to be a P. We're going to move still in our direction, which is going to append an A to this. So we'll add an A here. Okay, when we hit index zero, that's when we're going to flip our direction back to be positive one. So now we're going to go back over here. We move here and we add an L to this. I'm going to kind of remove the list because it's annoying to work with. Okay, so we move this over. We're going to move this down, add an I here. We hit down here. So we're going to flip it back to minus one. We go back up here. We move this over and we add an S here, we move up, we're going to add an H here, we flip our direction, we're going to move back down, and we add an I, we move this down, we are going to add an R, we flip our direction again, we're going to move up and add an I here, we move up again, we are going to add an N over here, we flip our direction, and we're going to move and add the last thing is G here. Now this looks really weird, but if you still read it, it is right. Okay, so all I did is space them out correctly horizontally, we have P A Y P A L I S H I R I N G. PayPal is hiring. We still have that. And all you would have to do here is since this is basically a list of each of these things are inner lists and each of them are characters. It's actually very interesting on how we would do that for the time complexity because you'd start with an empty string and then you would basically join up this into P A H N. Okay, so we add P A H and 
end to it. And then we would need to join up APLSIIG, except you actually need to add that onto this stuff here. And that's actually not as simple as just appending this stuff. You are doing string concatenation here. And one of these lists, well, that's actually on the order of N many characters. So R times, you actually are doing your concatenation, which is going to be an N operation. Because as this gets bigger and bigger here, you have to keep copying the string that you have and then adding the few characters. So string concatenation is slow. So this is actually a big O of R times N time complexity. And I would argue, although I've seen different people say different things for this, that the space complexity, in my opinion, it is going to be O of N plus R. Basically because at the very beginning, you are storing space for R many lists. We store R many empty lists. And then additionally, we're basically storing all of the characters. Okay, so let's code this solution up. Okay, so a simple base case, if the number of rows is equal to one, then you can just return the original string. That makes that case really, really easy. Then we'll get an index i for the row, set that at zero to be the first row, and we'll get a direction, which is called d, and that's going to be equal to one. So that's going to swap between positive one for going down and negative one for going back up. Okay, now we'll initialize our row matrix. So rows is equal to the list of the empty list or underscore in the range of num rows. So now we have a list of num rows many empty list. So we can always index into any of those and there'll be a list. And then we're going to iterate through our strings. So for char in s for each of the characters, we will rows at i dot append with the character. So i will be the correct index for the row. So we take that, that's going to be a list. We append into that the character we're currently looking at. Okay, then we need to adjust these things. So if i is equal to zero, well, right now it is equal to zero, but basically picture if we went down and then back up to zero, that means we need to flip the direction. So we need to set the direction to be going down, which is equal to one. And otherwise, if i is equal to num rows minus one, that means that it's going to be the last index. We hit this because we were going down. So we need to go back up. That sets the direction equal to negative one. And then this is very useful because then we can just do this as i plus equals d. So we made sure that the direction is going to be correct there. And then our index is just going to be offset at one, either plus one if we're going down or minus one if we're going up. Okay, so that's going to generate the characters for each of those rows. So then we'll get our return string, which I'll call ret is equal to an empty string for now. We'll do for i in the range of num rows. Our return string is going to concatenate with the empty string dot join of the rows at i. Okay, so then after we do that, we have the return string. We can just simply return that string ret. If you're to run that, that is going to work and submit that. That's going to pass our test cases very quickly as well. Okay, so as we said, this is going to have a time complexity here of big O of n times the number of rows. And the space complexity of this, well, we're clearly storing this many lists. So we're storing num rows many lists. And in each of those, we're storing some of the characters. So I would say that this is a space complexity of big O of num rows plus n. Okay, guys, I hope that was helpful. Check out algomap.io in the description if you haven't already. And have a great day, guys. Bye-bye.